What's going on and welcome to the Solo Shot. My name is Tom Vecchio. We have an eight-game MLB slate tonight. Lock is set for 7.05. As always, this is one of the many shows on the FanDuel Podcast Network. You can find that anywhere, whether it's iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play. Make sure to give it a like, follow, or subscribe on a given platform. Leave a review. That would be greatly appreciated. And you can follow me on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. Uh, before we hop into things, hit a homer with a $5 Dinger Tuesdays on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Each Tuesday, all customers will get $5 in bonus bets for every home run hit by both teams when you place a $25 to hit a home run wager on MLB games. And the best part about Dinger Tuesdays is that even if you bet and loses, FanDuel will pay you $5 for every home run. There's no better place to bet on America's pastime than America's number one sportsbook. Head over to your FanDuel account or download the FanDuel Sportsbook app to pick your home run hitter. It must be 21 plus and present in select states. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in seven days. Max bonus bet $25. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG if you're in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, or Virginia. Call 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342 if you're in Arizona. Call 1 888 7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat if you're in Connecticut. Call 1 800 9 with it if you're in Indiana. Call 1 800 522 4700 or visit ksgamblinghelp.com if you're in Kansas. Call 1-877-770-STOP if you're in Louisiana. GamblingHelplineMA.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts. Visit www.mdgamblinghelp.org if you're in Maryland. Call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369 if you're in New York. Call 1-800-522-4700 if you're in Wyoming or visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net if you're in West Virginia. All right, let's jump into tonight's slate again. Eight-game slate lock is set for 7.05. When it comes to the weather for tonight, we are looking pretty clear. It is hot and humid in Atlanta. No surprise in the summer. Always a great hitting environment there. We will certainly be looking at some Braves hitters. There could be a slight bit of rain in Oakland. Uh, shouldn't be too much overall. Also, with the, uh, the the tropical storm hitting Southern California, we just want to check in on the Angels at home. Make sure that the uh, you know the playing conditions are set for that. Let's jump into the pitching for tonight's slate. Starting off up at the top, Luis Castillo leads the way at ten point seven. Jordan Montgomery at ten point three. James Paxton at ten thousand. Michael Walk at 9,700, Christian Javier at 94, and Lucas Giolito at 9,100 round out the pitchers that are 9,000 and above. It's certainly looking like Castillo is the clear top option on tonight's slate. He is on the road taking on the Chicago White Sox. When we look to Castillo overall this season, he has been awesome, coming in with a very solid 27.3% strikeout rate. He has a 6.1% walk rate. He's only allowing 1.38 home runs per nine, and he has a super solid 3.62 skill interactive ERA Sierra, mostly a medium contact pitcher, which is always good to see at 46%. He is very, very slightly a fly ball pitcher. That's at 42.2% compared to his ground ball rate at 40.7%. He's a pitcher that we've routinely trusted throughout the season to you know push those strikeouts to a higher level, really bringing that fantasy upside in. I got to say, he's clearly the best option among this top tier, especially the more expensive pitchers. You know, when we factor in the salaries, when we factor in the matchups for some of these other hitters, when it comes to Chicago, really not an offense we're too worried about overall. They come in with a 23.4% striker rate versus righties this season, which is the 10th worst in the league. They're also a below average offense, as we've seen from them really for the majority of the season. They actually come in with an 84 WRC plus versus righties this season, which is tied for dead last in the league with the Colorado Rockies. There's also not a ton of power in the White Sox lineup, as you would imagine, with a team ISO sitting at 149 versus righties. All of this puts Castillo in a great spot to, I would say, clearly be the top pitcher 
on tonight's slate. And I want to say he's a clear step ahead of Montgomery, Paxton, Waka, Javier. This is a, a very mixed bunch, specifically when it comes to Michael Waka. 9700 I think, is quite a pretty penny to pay for that salary when he's going to be making his second start off the IL, not necessarily a spot that I want to be going. Paxton doesn't necessarily have the easiest matchup going up against the Houston Astros. This kind of pushes me to Montgomery as the second option I'd be looking to. He's been solid this, this season. There's no doubt he does not have as high of a strikeout rate compared to Castillo. Montgomery is only at 22% this year. He's only allowing 0.91 home runs per nine, which is certainly very solid. He has a 6.3% walk rate this year. His Sierra is sitting at 40 uh, at 4.14, and he is a very, very big medium contact ground ball pitcher. We're hoping for him you know, to get five, maybe six strikeouts, really get to that sixth inning while limiting the damage, which he can do with this 54.1% uh, medium contact rate and 45.9% ground ball rates. You know, the matchup on paper may not seem great, but this Arizona team, they've kind of been struggling a bit recently. And we've seen good stuff from them overall, but their offense has clearly taken a step back when we look at them overall on the season versus lefties. They're coming in with a 94 WRC plus, which is 19th in the league. And certainly they have some power and they, you know, they added some bats at the deadline, but this is not the matchup. I think we need to be shying away from Montgomery, who, yes, he doesn't have as high of a striker rate as Castillo, but he's looked good in his first three starts for Texas with a 25% strikeout rate and 37.5% strikeout rate in two of these three starts. So he's been pushing it a little bit higher. Now, granted, these are certainly easier matches against Miami and against the Angels where he pushed that strikeout rate a little bit higher. And yes, Arizona does not have as high of a strikeout rate compared to those teams, but he's certainly in a good spot overall, given the lack of power we see in the Diamondbacks lineup in the, the majority of things. Yes, Christian Walker, Corbin Carroll, Tommy Pham, those players can hit home runs, but I'm not overly worried about them for Montgomery. Ultimately, for pitching, I think this leaves two clear options. The third for me would be Lucas Giolito for the now Los Angeles Angels. I like his salary overall. And since he, he's going up against the Reds, this is also a team that, yes, they have some power. They have these flashes. But overall, they've kind of been trending downward in recent weeks. And this is, again, not a team that I'm super worried about overall. We've seen some really good strikeout stuff, not only from Giolito this season, but obviously over the course of his career, he's coming with a 24.8% strikeout rate. His 8.4% walk rate is right on that edge of something that I don't love to see. He has a 4.2 OCR this season. 49.2% medium contact rate is great to see. It's that 45% fly ball rate that can get him into danger, which is why we see 1.65 home runs per nine allowed this season. Yes, Cincinnati, they do have some power in their lineup with a 167 team ISO, which is the 13th best versus right-handed pitching, but they also come in with a 95 WRC plus versus righties, which is 18th in the league. So it's it's a mixed bag for Cincinnati when, yeah, they have some power, but they're not consistent overall. More importantly, they have a 24.3% strikeout rate versus right-handed pitching, which is the seventh worst in the league. So it does present that fantasy upside that we want from Giolito, who is 9,100 tonight. I want to say it at a pretty good salary. So it's looking like Castillo number one up at the top. If you want that little bit of sour relief dropping down to 9,100, Giolito could be that player. And I think Montgomery is a nice pivot away from Castillo. I don't think that Mo Montgomery has nearly as high of a strikeout ceiling as Castillo does, but he should be far less popular compared to Castillo when we look at, you know, just general lineup construction. Don't have a whole lot of interest in passing going up against Houston. Don't have interest in Michael Walk at that salary Going up against Miami, although it is an easier matchup going up against uh, Miami, the pitch count is something I'm going to be you know, particularly interested in for Waka, considering it is his second start off the IL. Let's turn to some stacks for tonight. Again, an eight-game slate, it's not overly loaded with options. There's no course field on tonight's slate. I think it points us in a direction of a few clear teams, and one of them should not be any surprise. That would be the Atlanta Braves. They are at home. They're going up against the New York Mets. The Mets will have David Peterson on the mound. He is not a pitcher. We need to be worried about, really, at any point, and he's a pitcher that kind of has the overall profile, something that I, I like to see, whereas 24.2% strikeout rate is just slightly above the league average. He's not overly dominant on the mound. He has 11% walk rate this season, which is – very, very dangerous. That's one of the things I love to see when it comes to targeting pitchers. You're letting runners on base for free prevents 
so much potential upside. Now, he only has a 72.2%, uh, excuse me, 72.2 inning sample size this season. So you could say, okay, that's a little bit small. 11% walk rate could be slightly inflated. But if we look back to last year, he had 105.2 innings pitched and it was at 10.6. So he is a pitcher that does not have uh, that, that walk rate at a lower point. It's He's always going to be struggling with that. And this leads to what we're seeing him posting this season, which is 1.36 home runs per nine allowed. So we have this combination of a pitcher that's not overly dominant on the balance strikeouts. He's allowing runners on base for free. And that's leading to home runs for the opposing team, which presents massive fantasy upside. And yes, the Atlanta Braves have plenty of power in their lineup. Surprise, surprise. They have several hitters we can be looking to. Now, Peterson is a left-handed pitcher. So we're going to be looking to a lot of the righties when it comes to the Braves. Shocking. They have power up and down their lineup. I think we should be looking to them as many as we can possibly afford. Now, this is where I think Giolito can come into play because Castillo is very, very expensive. And when we're looking to the Braves lineup and we want to get several of these hitters uh, you know, into our lineup because of the power that they have, this is where things can get a little bit dicey because Acuna, Olsen, Murphy, Riley are all 3,900 and above led by Acuna at 4.8, which is very, very expensive when we're trying to get some of these hitters in our lineup with a pitcher that's over 10,000. So that's where I like Giolito just a bit. Of course, all of those hitters are elite, but we have to be considering someone like Marcelo Zuna, whether it's Sean Murphy or Travis Darno in the lineup. If Darno's in the lineup, he's 2,900. That offers a nice bit of salary relief. We can always be going there. Orlando RC is obviously seeing more playing time with Ozzy Albies out. You could certainly be looking there. He's 2,700. It really comes down to, for the Atlanta lineup, how many and which players can you afford? Yes, getting Acuna, Olsen, Murphy, Riley would be awesome, but that's probably not going to be happening when you have Castillo as your pitcher. So it, it comes down to who makes the lineup for the Braves and how many of them can you afford in one spot. Of course, we like to have all the top hitters, but you know it, it is what it is. We live in a, in a salary cap situation when it comes to MLB DFS. So the Braves are going to be popular tonight. I don't think that's any, anything uh, of a surprise, especially on a smaller eight-game slate. We also can be looking to the San Diego Padres. Johnny Cueto is expected to be on the mound for the Miami Marlins. Yes, we do have a bit of inconsistency when it comes to the Padres offense overall, but ultimately not too worried about the matchup when it comes to Johnny Cueto. He has obviously a smaller sample size this year, only 32.1 innings pitched. He's obviously not getting the strikeouts as he once was earlier in his career. at 20% this season. Obviously it comes from a small sample size. He's also allowing 2.51 home runs per nine. Again, we have to take that with a bit of a grain of salt, just given the smaller sample size, along with this 50% fly ball rate. Again, we have to account for the innings pitched. However, I still like this matchup for San Diego. They have a number of power hitters in their lineup. Of course, we want to be looking at the top with Fernando Tatis. He's, of course, a great option. Basically, any single slate, Juan Soto, Xander Bogarts, Manny Machado, all of these players are going to be solid on a nightly basis. Ha Sung Kim has been hot. Can't be talking about baseball, especially doing a uh, solo shot and not mention Ha Sung Kim uh, for Jim. It really, again, this is also a lineup that depending on who makes it, what they, what we should be seeing from them, they're mostly going to be in a good spot. Their salaries are a bit more affordable compared to the Atlanta Braves where Tatis at 4K is the most expensive option. And then Soto, Machado, Kim are the next three options that are all 3K and above. Now, I would love to mix in some players, whether it's a Xander Bogart, surprisingly under 3,000. Jake Cronenworth, 2,800, hasn't been the most consistent this year. You can ask my season-long teams, I had to drop him, but he's a player that I'd certainly be looking to just to round out a stack because he's surrounded by some better power hitters. So Johnny Cueto, not a pitcher that I'm overly worried about. Yes, I'm going to be factoring in a smaller sample size. He's not going to be allowing 2.51 home runs per nine the entire season, but a pitcher I'm not overly worried about uh, when it comes to the matchup versus San Diego. We also can be looking to the Texas Rangers tonight, another high-scoring offense. Yes, their offense hasn't been as hot as it once was. This you know three-game sweep from the Brewers wasn't amazing. Uh, but this is a spot that I think they can turn things around. They're obviously in a very close race on, in the AL West, the wild card, whatever it might be. They're going up against Slade Kekio for the uh, – Secchio, excuse me, for the Arizona Diamondbacks. 
He's a pitcher prospect for the Diamondbacks, has a very small sample size in his first year in the majors. It's 10.1 innings. So there's not much we can take from that. If we look to his AAA numbers this season where he had 103 innings pitched, it's still not overly great with a 23.1% strikeout rate and 2.01 home runs per nine allowed. His Sierra in the 10.1 innings is up at 5.14. I don't think we can take anything from that. We do see him allowing some fly balls, whether it's at the MLB level this season or in AAA at 38.7 in the MLB level and at 41.1 in the minor league. So not a pitcher we may need to be worried about initially. I know he's a top prospect for them, but that is yet to come to fruition. So the Texas Rangers are another team we can be looking to tonight. Kind of the same situation where they have some very clear power hitters at the top of their lineup that we want to get to. It just comes down to how many of them can we afford. Corey Sears, 4,400. Marcus Simeon, Adolis Garcia, Nate Lowe. All these players would be great to get into our lineup, specifically looking to Corey Seager with a 340 ISO this season versus right-handed pitching is absolutely amazing. We can also be looking to Nate Lowe at a 202 ISO, Adolis Garcia at a 254 ISO, and even Mitch Garver if he makes the lineup, whether it's him or Yona Heim, Mitch Garver has a 240 ISO in this split. So we're looking at several hitters that all have ISOs over 200, presenting plenty of power upside. They all are absolutely phenomenal when it comes to their fantasy potential. It's just a matter of, how, again, how many of them can we afford when we're trying to get Braves hitters into our lineups, when we're trying to get some of these Padres hitters into our lineups. And yes, I I would love to see someone like Sean Murphy in the lineup for the Braves tonight, but Travis Darno does offer a ton of salary relief. He's 1K cheaper. We will take every bit of salary relief we can, especially on a smaller slate when we're only dealing with so many options and when we have a very clear SP1 that we want to be paying up for with Luis Castillo. So tonight's slate, I, I, I want to say, is pretty straightforward where it's Castillo, it's Giolito, maybe it's Jordan Montgomery when it comes to the pitching options. And then we're going to see the Braves super popular. We're going to see we're going to see the Padres as a popular option. We're going to see the Texas Rangers as a popular option. You know, kind of the mainstays when it comes to MLB DFS. Now, can we be looking to someone like Seattle as, as an offshoot stack? I think that's possible. They're obviously super hot right now. They sweep Houston. They have their offense rolling. Julio Rodriguez is putting up hits left and right. I think they are also an option potentially tonight going up against Tuki Tucson for the Chicago White Sox. So the Seattle Mariners would be a team I would look to as kind of a filler stack, depending on what other players I can afford in or out of my lineup. When it comes to the dinger calls to close things out, this is going to be relatively straightforward. The easy answer for tonight's slate, you know, we always go with like a, a safer option and then kind of a long shot option. The safe option tonight would be Ronald Acuna for the Braves uh, going up against David Peterson. Love the split righty for Acuna, lefty for Peterson. It could be any of the righties when it comes to the Braves lineup, whether it's Acuna, Riley, if Murphy makes the lineup, Marcelo Zuna. I'm going to go with Acuna as the clear answer. And then I really like Nate Lowe for the Texas Rangers tonight. Love the split that he has. Love the salary for Lowe as well. He should be a player of 3,400. He can build into any type of lineup, whether it's cash or GPP. The Rangers are in a spot to put up some runs once again. So straightforward slate for tonight. Uh, Eight games, again, locks at 7.05. I will be back tomorrow. Jim will be back on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Then I will be back on Monday and Tuesday. Just switching things up as we come to the end of MLB season with NFL quickly approaching. All right, so that does it for today's slate. As always, eight games starts at 7.05. This is one of the many shows on the FanDuel Podcast Network. You can find that anywhere, whether it's iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play. Make sure to give it a like, follow, or subscribe. Leave a review. That would be greatly appreciated. You can follow me on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. Until next time, good luck in your contests.